Welcome to YNU5 Photos, coming to you from the campus of Yokohama National University here in Yokohama, Japan's second city. My name is Alec Macaulay. This is a broadcast for English language learners here in Japan and overseas. On the show, guests come in and talk about five photos that are important to them. Today I'm with Moira from Ireland who's talking about her recent trip back to Japan. Hello Moira. Hello Alec. How are you? I am fine, thanks. Tell me about photo number one. Photo number one is the view from my hotel. The hotel is in the center of Okayama in, for me, the best possible location beside the river overlooking the castle and with a lovely view of autumn colors. You lived in Okayama for a while. When was that? I lived in Okayama for two periods. Um, the first one was 1990 to 1993, and the second one was more recently 2002 to 2004. When you think of Japan, you don't automatically think of Okayama. Is there any special reason why you chose to live in Okayama? I chose. I suppose I didn't choose to live in Okayama so much as I wanted to come to Japan and the place that I had heard about from a friend was uh, Okayama and a particular university in Okayama and I applied for a, a job there and got it so that's why I arrived in Okayama. And if you were describing Okayama to people what kind of town would you describe Okayama as? Hmm. I suppose I was surprised when I came to Okayama because I'd simply heard of Okayama as a city. And for me, the pleasant surprise was that it was more like a big provincial town where I could cycle around and feel safe and have a place like Koroquen Gardens or get a short train trip out into the hills, the countryside. And that, for me, was different from what I would expect of a city. And I had heard of Kurashiki before I came to Japan, not in connection with my job, but in connection with a television program, which was called The Ginger Tree. And for some reason that made a big impression on me. And the particular image that stands out in my mind is the lights floating on the river at Obon. And there was something absolutely magical about that. And then to realize when I arrived in Okayama that Kurashiki was only a short train trip away was absolutely amazing. And we're going to talk about Kurashiki in photo number four. We'll move on to photo number two. Where is this? This is just inside the entrance to Korakuen. And um, this photo was taken towards the end of my visit this time. Um, I had gone to look at the chrysanthemum exhibition and on the way out I spotted this parasol and I thought it's like an image of Japan and especially with the pine trees in the background it just seemed like a lovely picture. Have you seen many changes in Korakuen um, over the years that you've been visiting Japan? In Korakuen itself I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. It seems to me to be one of the places that's timeless. And maybe the timelessness is partly because it doesn't change. And it's it seems the same to me as it did in 1990. Now, there may be changes, but I'm not aware of them. Okay, thanks very much. Photo number three. This is uh, one of the bonsai uh, chrysanthemums uh, at the exhibition that I mentioned earlier. It was just an amazing display of bonsai, chrysanthemum bonsai, of different colors, shapes, sizes. Really an overwhelming display of beauty and I suppose of, of skill and craftsmanship, you know, the work and the time that has gone into creating these. So I took lots and lots of photos of these and this is one of my favorites. I don't associate bonsai with, with flowers and with strong colours, but looking at this photo and the other photos in your bonsai collection, I see a lot of flowers, a lot of blooms, a lot of strong colours. Is that a, a, a traditional part of the bonsai? 
Uh, not to my knowledge. Um, certainly during my first visit to Japan, I had uh, seen exhibitions of bonsai in Korokuen and in other places, other parts of Japan. But I, as far as I can remember, the first time that I saw an exhibition of bonsai flowers or flowering bonsai, I don't know which way it is, was about 2003 on our last visit to Japan. So I don't know whether this is something new um, or it's something traditional that I just hadn't seen before. Have you ever tried your hand at any of the traditional Japanese arts? I had a small experience of Japanese cooking. Looking back now, I think I was quite brave in going to a series of cookery classes in Okayama about eight months after I arrived in Okayama in preparation for New Year. And everybody in, in this class was Japanese young women probably preparing to help their mother prepare for the New Year food. And um, I didn't learn very much, but the tasting was good. Okay, photo number four. Uh, this is Korashki, which uh, is one of my favorite places along the river in Korashki, along the old warehouses, I think they're called, now shops and uh, restaurants, and not far from the O'Hara Museum. And this photo, I suppose, captures so many aspects of Korashki, the, the water, which you know I mentioned, the film, the ginger tree, this is the center of the image with the lights floating on the water. Uh, but in this one, of course, there's the autumn colors in the background as well, and the blue of the sky reflected in the water. And just a peacefulness. And on this particular day, to my amazement, there were very, very few people around which I think, um, apart from being surprising, was also quite pleasant because it felt a bit like having the place to oneself. I went with a Japanese friend and we had lunch there and it was just a, a very lovely, peaceful afternoon. And let's move on to your final photo, photo number five. Ah. Photo number five is from the onsen at Yunogo and this will be one of my special memories of this visit to Japan. Um, I've also, I've always loved going to the onsen and did that quite a bit in the past, especially in the winter time. And on this occasion, when I came back, I discovered that three of my friends here in Okayama had arranged this particular trip to a really beautiful traditional onsen in Yunogo. So we had a super time and uh, the food was just amazing and the osake was very good and we did justice to both and had a really, really lovely evening and uh, a marvellous breakfast and a great send-off from the staff. It's hard to get a sense of the scale from the photo. How many people <coughs> could fit in this bath? Um, actually, we talked about that before we used it and we decided really only one comfortably. Um, I suppose if you were on very intimate terms with somebody, um, two could fit in it. But uh, we went in it singly. And you're in Yokohama now. You're moving on to Kyoto tomorrow. What's the, the rest of your itinerary for the trip? Uh, I go to um, Kyoto tomorrow uh, to meet a friend and uh, two of her children who are at university in different parts of Japan and she wanted them to meet me again because I hadn't seen them for a number of years. And uh, we're having lunch together in Kyoto. And then in the evening I meet um, uh, two other friends, a husband and wife from Okayama. I have, will have dinner with them. And then for the next two days I shall be with uh, one of these friends and we'll do a lot of sightseeing, revisiting places and seeing a few new places I expect that they will introduce me to. Okay, thanks very much, Mara. Thank you.